Hey everybody, welcome back. I am here with Pam Livingston. Pam, thanks for joining us again. Nice to be here, Abhijia. So everyone, uh, Pam, in uh, one of her weekly lessons, she uh, is including this really interesting hand and I begged her to let us record a quick video to be able to share the hand with all of you guys on this channel. So Pam, hi, can you set up this hand for us and let me know when, uh, when I should load it up for everyone? Well, I'll just tell you a bit of a funny story. So um, I was preparing for my my class, my regular class, and I thought, oh, I'd been working away, and I thought, oh, I'm going to take a break. Um, some people may call it procrastination, but I'm saying I was taking a break, and I decided to take a break by pay, playing an instant tournament on BBO. And uh, in As I go... Does. Yes, one does. It's taken a break from bridge by doing some more bridge. And um, so, so the the class I was preparing for was two raises. And lo and behold, on the very first hand in this tournament, there was a Q raise. I thought, hmm, somebody's trying to tell me something here. <laughs> but I we did the, the hand and... The, the bidding was quite interesting from the point of view of my lesson, but even more interesting, I thought, was the play. It was quite cute, and I think you'll enjoy it. All right. Well, I will load it up, and why don't you talk us through it? Okay, here it is. Okay, so um, the north hand opened one heart, and... We were overcalled two diamonds by the East 10 and made a Q raise of three diamonds. So that's showing a good fit for hearts and at mm. least invitational values. So North raised to four hearts and South, thinking they liked the, so the sound of the raise to four hearts, thought they'd make a slam try with a, with a cubit of four spades. And mm. Uh, North said, no, I'm not cooperating with that. Um, no, we're going to play in five hearts. So, and that's, that's where, we, where we set it in the auction. And um, I, I, on the hand, I was actually the south. But as you may know, when you're playing a BBO tournament, whether um, you're always the clearer if your side wins. So um, I got to bid the south hand, but got to play it from North's point of view. So, so that was quite fun so I, 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 sorry to interrupt a quick aside for the learners out there if you are confused at all by those cubids that Pam mentioned one I wish you uh, had uh, you were able to join us for the lessons which were brilliant and stepped us through these exact bids but Pam maybe we could follow up another time with some videos discussing cubids like this which we can share with the channel yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And um, the interesting thing, <laughs> the funny thing is that, um, so I'm North, but I bid us to um, the challenge of making five hearts instead of four, because I was the one that bid four spades. <laughs> so <laughs> I've put North, who is now me, I hope this isn't getting too confusing, um, into five hearts in instead of four. So, so you, you, you got kicked under the table by your robot partner. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was declarer, and um, and unsurprisingly, we got a diamond lead. Shall we start on the hand? Yes, please. So we got a diamond lead. What's uh, happening? Click that next button. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you can edit that bit out, right? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, totally. Sure. It's, it's already gone. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we get, um, I, I got the Ace of Diamonds lead on this, and remembering that, that North is, is the clearer. So, um, back here. Playing from dummy, and whoop, West, West uh, shows out. And I think we know what's coming now. So East has got six diamonds to the ace, king, queen. And sure enough, um, sure enough, we got another round and the third round. Okay, mm. now I hope you noticed that the nine and ten were in dummy 
And mm. so once this queen has gone, my my jack and my eight are going to be good. But um, I've got a bit of a problem now. I've already lost two tricks, and because I <laughs> I got a little bit excited and um, and made a slam try, I, I can't lose any more tricks. So. There is no choice now on what card I play from south, is there? I have to rough. Right, you uh, can't lose this, yeah. Yeah, or, or I'll be over roughed. Mm. Sadly. Okay. <laughs> right, so what have we got here? Now, as I, I pointed out, the jack and the eight of diamonds are good as long as nobody roughs them. And that's a that's a pretty nice club suit. Um, I can I can get to dummy by overtaking the king of clubs with the ace of clubs, and uh, pitching spade. So that's I don't great. actually need to take the spade finesse on this hand. So I'm right. looking I'm looking good in spades. I'm looking good in diamonds. I'm looking good in clubs. I just have to sort out the heart suit. So the queen is gone. And I have in my hand Ace King Jack Nine. What do you reckon? Mm, my big question <laughs> is, where's the ten, and how are the hearts distributed? What do you reckon? <laughs> well, I must admit, probably if if I managed to get this far without making a mistake. So if I had won that third trick, I'm guessing more often than not, at this point I would say, oh well, uh, I got. I can I can safely draw three rounds of trumps. I'm just going to do it without thinking, even worrying about that ten. Just I I probably wouldn't think through the possibility that um the 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 trumps might split unfavorably. So first, okay. Well, how about if I say this to you, Bajia? Yeah. So so um. So East has got six diamonds and West is void in diamonds. So West has got 13 cards distributed between spades, hearts, and clubs. Does that make you think a little bit differently? So, oh, so yep. East, East has got six diamonds and he's got seven um, spaces for the other three suits. Right. West has got no diamonds. He's got thirteen spaces for the other three. Mm, mm, mm. Does that make you think a little bit more about that? Part? Yes, of course, of course. And you know, the a, a, a uh, unbalanced hand in one un unbalanced hand suggests there will be other ones. So, I mean, is it just that West is much more likely to have that ten? Like well, we can't... it's not specifically that they're more likely to have the 10. They're more likely to have, I think, someone someone may disagree, but this is what I'm committing myself to. I think they're more likely to have four hearts, right? That they're quite likely to be split 4-1. And so if the right, split Right, one, it's not even just the 10. It's if West has... Four hearts and the ten. That's yeah. what we need to be careful of. So if there's four hearts in the west hand and one in the east uh, hand, then it's four times more likely that the west has the ten. <laughs> right. That makes sense, right? Yep. If I have a, a pile of four cards and a pile of one, I'm going to guess any card is in the pile going of four. To be. Okay. Now, um, mm. so... Rightly or wrongly, I'm looking at this hand, and it's and it's uh, quite interesting um, these hands because you know quite often when you're playing a hand, it all comes down to one critical decision in one suit, right? Whether yeah. you go right or not, or whether you make. And we all know there's a <laughs> big difference between those right. two, those point-wise. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that you should get all of these right. But I am saying that at this point, where you have to decide how to play this one suit, you need to have a really good think about it. <laughs> yeah. See if you can find any clues as to how to play this suit. And... Um, Mm. I'm going to act on this clue that 
there's just more spaces in West Hand, right? So, so I'm going. I've got a reason why I'm going to play for that. So, Pam, Pam sorry to interrupt. So, be, because of what we already know uh, in terms of East and West shape. Do we do we know that it's more likely that the hearts break four one rather than three two, or is it is it just that it's up in the air now and we have to consider it? We have to be careful because it is it is a strong possibility. Well, I think okay. So let's look at some distributions. Um, and uh, you know i don't know the exact numbers of these but um say say west has three hearts then they've got uh 10 cards in the blacks so five five six four six four three is is possible right so if they if they have three hearts in east has two it's still three to two that they get the 10 right Still three to two, right? That they, that they have the ten. So say they only had two hearts. Well, now they've got eleven cards in the blacks. So they might be six, five, two, and this is getting less likely now. This extreme, more extreme, right? Thing. Yeah. So they could. That's getting more extreme. So right. that could be five, five in the blacks and three hearts. So. But it's still three to two that they have the ten, even in mm. that, even in that situation. And um, so, you know, I'm not saying that the next thing I do is I'm going to put bet my house that I'm going to make this contract. I'm not saying that. Not betting the farm on it. No, no, I'm not betting my farm on it. I'm just saying I have to decide how to play this heart suit, and I think mm. I've got a reasonable clue. I've got mm. something to help me decide, and, and that's what that's what I'm going to do. I can't right. sit here for hours <laughs> till it appears to be in a vision. I've made a decision about what I'm going to play for on this hand. Yeah, and um, and yeah, I, I'm going to play for the team to be in the West hand. So, and and um, so, what it, what does that mean then? So, if if we're playing as if the ten is in the west hand, what? A, how are we going to play our trump suit then? How are we well, going to play those cards? Tell me, how are you going to? I'm playing for west, rightly or wrongly, to have the ten. What are you going to do now? You're in dummy. You just won with the queen of hearts. What are you going to do now? Well, we're. A, I mean, first we're hoping that west has to put down the ten. If West doesn't put down the ten, then we we think about finessing that nine. Um, you can't think about it then. What it, you you <laughs> think about it now? <laughs> so if the ten doesn't pop up singleton, I think that's pretty unlikely. That would mean they've got twelve right. cards in blacks, right? But right, can, right, can right. So the ten's not going to come out. We're just hoping it, that West still has it. So what do we do? Do we f finesse right away, or do we play one of the sure winners first? Well, I'm 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 committing to a line. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to play for them to be um, four one or maybe three two, but we're holding the ten. So um, I don't know. Should I just play the two now and? Do what you thought was an option, play the nine. Or is there something better? <laughs> it, 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 it's that feeling that I have so often sitting where, okay, so we we should we should win one round with the ace or the king. But why? Why why is that better? What are we hoping happens if we win one round with the sure ace or king winner? Well, you know, I've sat here and I've uh, 
I've sat here thinking all these thoughts. Hopefully I haven't taken this long. My opponents will be getting pretty irritated by now. But uh, they're robots, they don't care. <laughs> so yeah, but 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 this is the thought process and, and I've I've said to myself, I'm I'm playing West uh, for the ten. And yeah. um it'd be easy to bolt off and go play the two and West will play small and I'll play the nine, but I'm going to take out a little bit of insurance on this mm. hand. I don't have to make that commitment yet, right? Mm. I can, I've can. i got entries to dummy, safe entries to dummy. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to go first and play the two to the ace. And if I don't see anything interesting, I'm going to cross to dummy with the uh, with the king of overtaking the king of diamonds at uh, clubs sorry overtaking the king of clubs with the ace and then i'm going to finesse for the nine that's my plan so right, it's just that we, because we know we can securely get back we can tr try the finesse later let's just do it one time we might get some more information we might get we might see something which we couldn't have picked up before but we still have our game plan, and this gives us a, the chance to get a little more info. Now, yeah, I'm not feeling very hopeful about this, that, that <laughs> I will get more info. I'm not quite sure what info I could get, uh, but there is, there, it's pretty much no cost, um, this insurance right. plan. If someone offered you insurance at no cost, you'd take it, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Right. If, so, if, if, if there's a, a, a 5% chance that something will benefit me and it costs me nothing, might as well, might as well go for it. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I'm not hopeful um, about this, Bajir, mm. but um, and maybe I'm just prolonging the agony of when I cross back <laughs> take that finesse. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to oh, we'll better click on the right screen. I am going to play the two of hearts to the ace. <laughs> How about that? Yay! So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the hand uh, now, so you can see the whole hand. Okay. So, so we we were right about the four one, right? right? That's exciting. Right. Yeah, well, I might have been right, but we were right, and we were right to take out our no cost insurance policy because there it is. We've got the we've got the rest, rest of the tricks. My gosh, Pam. So looking at this, and again, if if you if I was playing it on my own, I would have just zoomed through the, the trumps. I would have drawn them out. I would have been fine. I would have missed the chance to think through this moment. The ten would have come down under the ace, and I would have just kept on going, whistling, whistling my way. But I would have missed the chance to really think that moment through. Yeah, well, it's really interesting, and you know. <laughs> so, so for all you people that galloped off and just played trumps from the top without thinking that, congratulations, you get the same score as me. <laughs> but there, there's, there, there's yeah. the rub because that extra thinking it, it'll be in the next hand or the one after that or the one after that when we keep galloping away and i'll be it'll be those of you people like you and hopefully us at some point if we keep learning from you who are able to really think through and apply the hints that we get from the cards that are already played to the likelihood of what the unseen hands might be yeah, so head, so you um, you guys that galloped off and drew trumps, you're making five hearts. Those of us who sat back and thought much more likely that the ten of hearts is with West and we're going to play for that, but didn't take that extra step <laughs> and finessed on the first round, you're going down in five hearts when the people that didn't think about it <laughs> will make. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things to unpack it. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, Pam! Fantastic, fantastic hand. 
Uh, for everyone watching, let us know which uh, which class are you in. Try to be honest. Are you uh, one of those gallop off into the sunset? <laughs> are you uh, someone who would think, ah, you know, that 10 is most likely in West Hand, so I'm going to finesse that right away, and you ended up at the bottom of the heap this time. Or <laughs> are you in the, the, the more exclusive uh, uh, crowd like our, our wonderful teacher, Pam? <laughs> well, it worked on that head. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Pam, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if you are interested in joining us for Pam's weekly lessons, come to learnbridgeonline.com forward slash Pam dash Livingston. We'd love to have you. Pam, thanks so much. See you. Bye, everyone.